start recording. Uh, but the human circulatory system is a good one to start with because, well, we all have one. Why, why am I talking over top of you? Quiet down. Just shh, quiet down. OK. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to say lesson 3.2, circulatory system part one. I said part one. If you need lined paper, there's some in my office. Feel free to go grab it. OK, so what does the circulatory system do? I mean, that name is interesting, isn't it? Circular. Hmm. Circular. Sorry? Ah, very good. That's exactly what we're going to say. The circulatory system <laughs> The circulatory system moves materials throughout the body Carried, <laughs> carried in what? What do we carry the materials in that get traveled, that get circulated through the body in the circulatory system? Veins. Sure, yep. Yeah. And what flows through those veins and arteries? Car carried in blood through a series of blood vessels. Well, that's pretty messy. I'm going to try to be neater. What do I said throughout? In my practice note, I said around, which sounds way less pretentious, to be clear. And yet, here we go throughout. Like really? I like around. Anyway, okay, doesn't matter. Not a big deal. So, over the next couple days, we're going to talk about the components of your circulatory system. But the first most obvious component of your circulatory system is your blood. So we're going to talk a bit about blood. blood. In previous years, I had my friend Chris, who is a nurse, come and take some of my blood out of me during this lesson. And then we, uh, we put it in a centrifuge. We looked at it under the microscope. We actually like looked at some blood. Um, in COVID times, I think probably it would be frowned upon to be taking my blood out. So we're not going to do that. Um, what is the purpose of blood? What's it do? What is the purpose of our blood? Why do you have it? I mean, we know it's important because we have it. We know it's important because if you lose it, if you lose a bunch of it, that's dangerous and it can harm you. What is the purpose of your blood? Yeah. Sorry? Good. And specifically, how does it do that? Like, why, why, why blood? What's it do? Like, what's its main, main, main function? If you said the one thing that blood has to do constantly, or you don't make it, what's the thing blood has to do constantly, or you will actually die very quickly, which is why? Very good. So its primary purpose is transportation. This is the single most important function of blood in your body. And it is the only thing that allows us to have very big bodies. 
all right? Very small organisms don't have to have blood because they can just have diffusion, they can just have materials move through their body easily. But for you, you are big, and you've got cells going all the way from the tip of your toes right to the very top of your scalp, and every one of those cells needs oxygen. But does, do you have lungs in your head, and lungs in your feet, and lungs in your arms? That'd be weird. You only have lungs in the middle of your body, right, in your chest. And yet, how do we take the air that's in our chest and get it to go to the tip of our head and the bottom of our toes. Do we have little air ducts that move the air all through your body? It doesn't. No, instead, we take that oxygen, we put it into our blood, and we pump our blood all around the body. And when I say all around, every single cell in your body has access to blood. You have a network of blood vessels that allows every single cell in your body to have access to blood at all times. So transportation is the first biggest and most primary function of blood, and the most important thing it transports for sure is oxygen. Cellular respiration, the process that gives us energy in the cell, is oxidative. It requires oxygen. You need oxygen at all times. What else does blood transport? Do you know? Nutrients is good. Um, you have blood vessels all around your digestive tract. And as food gets digested, the nutrients get put into your blood where they can be sent to other parts of the body. What else gets transported in your blood? Potentially, I'm not going to put that as a purpose because that's not done intentionally, though that does happen. We'll talk about it. What else? It's all well and good to have things that you need transported in the blood. But what about stuff you need to get rid of. If you look at the streets of our cities, yeah, they've, very good. If you look at the streets of our cities, yeah, they've got Amazon trucks and delivery trucks dropping stuff off, but what else is on them? Garbage trucks carting stuff away, right? It's an important function. Likewise, waste materials. Carbon dioxide is the biggest, best example of a waste material, so very good on that one, but certainly not the only one. So anything that needs to move through your body moves through the super highway system that is your circulatory system. Um, Do you have any good examples of food you just touched? Uh, or I could give one, which is what I did. What's the second purpose of blood? Blood is good for transportation. It's not all it's good for. What else does it do? Well, you actually mentioned something, Preston, which is because it travels through our body, it's a logical vector for attack. If you're a virus or a bacterium and you're trying to infect somebody, what better way than to get into the blood? Because you can get everywhere. Which means if it is a potential place where attacks can happen, then what do we need to have in our blood? Transportation. Yeah, which do what? Attack. Yeah, very good. What do we call that? Defense. Yeah, that's right. Your blood has defensive structures, defensive functions. And we'll get more into that later. Somebody already mentioned white blood cells, but we'll just say quickly. That's what the immune system is. We will, yeah. Or are you saying, am I talking about the immune system? I was asking if we're going to. We are going to, yes. A little bit, not as much as I'd like to, but has cells that fight infections. Oh, okay, well, my phone's going crazy. Uh, they are just spelling variations. Which one's Canadian? Ooh, that's actually a good question, and I don't know. Oh. Uh, okay. Do I want to say anything else about that? Oh, I did. So, yeah, we have cells that fight infections. We call those leukocytes, which sounds fancy, but that literally means white cells in Latin. So we also call them white cells. Um, is that the only way that your blood defends you from damage? If you get cut, what happens? You're supposed to be bleeding. Yeah. 
you get the blood clotting at the lean site to stop loss, right? So we also have cells that are designed to heal wounds. Blood has a third, I mean, blood has a bunch of functions, but blood has another function that I know you know about. Um, I have hypertension, I have high blood pressure, which means my heart pumps a little bit harder than it probably should. That has some potential long-term health da uh, dangers because it can cause damage to the arteries. But in addition to that, one thing of note of that is that my extremities always have a lot of blood in them. Um, and so, my extremities tend to have a, ten, uh, a, a trait that my wife, for example, is actually has low blood pressure. She has to take iron pills and she's supposed to keep salt up in her diet. And her hands, her extremities, which get less blood, is something noticeably different about our two hands. Yeah. Oh, very good. Yeah, exactly right. Because our blood serves as a fluid that moves through us a very similar function to the radiator in a car. What's the radiator in a car do? Ooh, like, that, like it can if you have the air conditioning activated, but just in its most basic, a radiator's function is what? Regulate the temperature of the engine. See, an engine needs to be hot enough that the fuel wants to burn, but if it gets too hot, what'll happen to the engine? Maybe hypothetically you're driving home from Timmins at 4 a.m. and you hit a raccoon and your radiator springs a leak and you think, I just want to get home and you drive through it for that last two kilometers and uh, the car overheats, but you just keep driving it anyway. Ugh, and then what happens? Hypothetically. Year 2006. Chevy. Yeah, and specifically you break down because... Yeah, but why does that matter? What's it do? What happens is the, the, the heads, like the actual valves of your engine, just warp because they get too hot, right? And so you blow a head gasket, and then that's an expensive repair, so maybe then you just junk the car, hypothetically speaking. Thanks, Raccoon. Um, happens? Yeah, that happens. Uh, should have just pulled over because it's 4 a.m. and I was so tired of junk the car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Chromebooks for a car. No idea. Uh, Welcome to it. Yep, by all means. I don't know which ones he has booked, but whatever. If nobody's using those, grab them. Um, so, temperature regulation. How a radiator works is the engine gets hot, and you have water flow through the engine, and the water gets hot. Then you move that water, you pump it, to a series of tubes that run behind a grill, and you blow air across them, and the water takes the heat from the engine and moves it out to the air. Does that make sense? Your body does the same thing. In the summer, when your body gets hot, it's going to pump as much blood as it can, as your arms, as your hands, down your feet, down your arms, up to your head, and then that's a different thing. But it's going to get as much oh, heat right. to the outside of your body as it can, so that hopefully that heat can float away with the air and get transferred to the air. Does that make sense? In the winter, if you didn't wear warm enough clothes and your body is starting to get cold, it's going to do the opposite. It's going to reduce blood flow to your extremities. It's going to let your hands get really cold. It's going to let your legs get really cold so that it can move the heat to where it's most important, which is the brain. That's a big one. You want a nice warm brain. You got real problems if that thing cools down. Your heart, your lungs. Does that make sense? So your body controls its temperature by moving blood around. So blood also serves as a temperature regulatory mechanism. Um, a professor I had at Brock University um, is a guy named Dr. Glenn Tattersall, and he did some really neat research. He worked with toucans in the rainforest, and he proved that they, do you know where toucans send blood if they want to cool down and keep blood from going if they want to stay warm? Their beaks. He discovered that the toucan's beak actually has blood vessels running all through it 
and that the toucan's beak serves like a big radiator. The toucan wants to cool down, it pumps blood into its beak, and the air blows across it, and it cools the bird down. The toucan needs to stay warm, it cuts the blood flow to the beak off and keeps it inside its body. Isn't that cool? And the last thing your blood can do is, again, because it goes everywhere in your body, it is a good way to send messages. Very good. Now, your brain can send messages, but think of it this way. If your brain wants to send a message to every cell in your body, it has to send a message to every cell in your body. That would be like if you wanted to tell a bunch of people things and you had to text each one of them individually. Does that make sense? A lot of work, right? Even if you're going to send a group chat, you still have to put all the names up into the group thing, right? If that wasn't like the group you'd already made. On the other hand, you could also just put a big billboard up, right? And be like, hey, here's the thing, right? You could make it really visible. When you put messages in the blood, it just goes everywhere in the body. Because where does the blood go? Everywhere. Everywhere in the body. So if your body wants to send a message to the whole body, maybe saying, oh man, get tensed up. We might have to run or fight soon. Instead of sending individual messages on individual nerves, it can just put that message into the blood. What do we call the chemicals that the blood, the body uses as messages in blood? We have a word for them. Chemicals that we use to send messages throughout the body. Mm. H word. Often associated with teenagers, though that's unfair because it applies to everybody. Correct. We call them hormones. Okay, now, blood's this amazing stuff that does all of this. And by the way, we haven't covered all the functions of blood. We've kind of just covered the main ones. This is the point where if I had my druthers, I'd be holding up a test tube of my blood and saying, what is this stuff? But I can't. So we have to pretend I'm holding up a test tube of my blood and saying, what is this stuff? Oh, it's blood. Okay, but what is blood? Sorry? Okay, but I mean like a lot of cells, but like blood's a liquid. Are cells liquid? Can they? I don't think they can. What, do, what would that look like? Like can something be a liquid but also like have a fixed shape and things like that? No. So blood contains cells, but blood itself isn't just cells. Blood actually has two main parts. It has the liquid portion, which we call plasma. Very good. And by weight, it's anywhere from 50 to 55% of the weight of the blood is its plasma, is its liquid component. And your plasma... Uh, is a fluid. It's a water-based fluid uh, that contains all kinds of stuff, all kinds of different compounds, the real soup of different things, but all of it liquid or dissolved in liquid. Um, but then you've also got the blood cells. cells. Oh, see, I wish Chris were here right now and just, because it, it is really cool, which is, if we do this, I have a centrifuge in the back. And you know what a centrifuge is? Big old spinny thing, and you can put stuff in it, and it just spins it real fast. And if you put your blood in that and spin it out, it'll separate it by weight. The heavy stuff will want to spin its way to the bottom as it spins, and the light stuff will float to the top. And you can actually separate red blood into boom, the cells at the bottom, which now is just like a red mass, and the plasma at the top. And the plasma. So it's just more of it. It's more of it. It's less dense. Good, good, good. That was a great insight, by the way. Good question. But plasma isn't heavier because it's denser, it's heavier because there's more of it. Which, if you think about it, makes sense. There has to be enough liquid to contain 
all of the cells. But still, that's a lot of cells. Um, tomorrow we'll look at some prepared blood slides under the microscope and you'll see what they look like. Um, so let's talk about the plasma first. I want you to know, by the way, uh, Preston, that you've given me a complex about my M's and now feel that there's something wrong with them right. and the lack of straight lines. I'm trying to be better, but it's not going well. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. I didn't actually want to have a discussion about this. Okay. <laughs> so the first. Well, you brought it up. I did. That's right. I said I wanted to talk about it. I didn't want to have a conversation about it. Two things can be true. Hey, chemists, if it's a water-based solution, what's the adjectival aqueous. form of that? Oh, very good. You're hired. Uh, it's an aqueous solution. Good. Don't worry about that if you're not in chemistry. Just thought I'd mention it. Um, it contains lots of nutrients and hormones. But note, not them all. It is not the case that every nutrient that blood carries is carried in the plasma. Some of them are carried in the cells, but lots of them are carried in the plasma. And why does it have to have a liquid component? Well, this is pretty obvious. What's the primary purpose of blood in all of its functions? It is taking stuff from one place and moving it to a different place. And to do that, it needs to flow. So the plasma allows the blood to flow, right? Just most basic functionality. Because of plasma, our blood is a liquid, and because our blood is a liquid, it can flow. And I suppose I should say through the blood vessels. It is making me insane that I put a space between these two and not the previous. Now I'm gonna try to grab that and add a space. That didn't go well. I'm so sad right now. Yeah, if you put annoying amount of space, it can just uh, highlight. Oh, uh, no. Go up one more. Space, you just put a double space in between. Oh, no. Oh, damn it. Sorry. OK, <laughs> let's fix it. Oh, that was even worse. OK, whew. Oh, that was almost bad. Thank you for noticing. I would have felt really bad about that later. It would have really bugged me. Thank you. OK. So that's the plasma. The plasma is, it always gets short shrift. We always just kind of be like, yeah, it's the liquid, whatever. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on there, but we're going to move on because. Okay, so you just short shifted it. Oh, I, I know, I said it always gets short shrift. It's, it's, uh, it's the part we don't talk enough about. Uh, that's too dark a blue for what I want to be doing right now. I like that better. Oh, that's elegant, much better. All right, so that's the plasma. And we're going to talk next about the cells. All right. Well, the first thing we know is that Cells, blood cells are called hemocytes. And this is going to be useful because if we haven't talked about this yet, anytime you see the prefix heme or hemo, we are talking about blood. And note that the British put this odd a in there as well. So if the British spell the word hemoglobin, they spell it like this. I find that weird, but hey, who am I? Well, I'll be sure to let the United Kingdom know. I'll be like, today, Governor, just so you know, Preston doesn't like how you, like, what, what do you want me to do, Preston? What do I look like? Okay. Then, this is really good to know. Anytime you see sight, that just means cell. 
Cytoplasm is the liquid inside the cell. Cytokinesis is the splitting of the cell in half. Hemocytes are blood cells. Lymphocytes are lymph cells. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm blanking here, but uh, point being, anytime you see sight at the end of something, it means cell. Because it's the Latin word for cell. cell. Oh, makes sense. Okay, so hemocytes are blood cells. And what types of blood cells are there? What does what say? That looks like an R, doesn't it? A little bit like an R. That's better. Not great, but better. Yeah, so what are the types of blood cells? Well, the most common one we all know about are what? Yeah, what's the most common type of blood cell? Very good. And these are called erythrocytes. No worries. I have a gift for you. Is it money? Um, no. Oh. You were giving me the money. Oh. Oh. Well, that's a nice gift. Oh, I feel pure so, already. Um, you're best to put it on at lunch. It has to run for an hour on high. If you, if you have a kind of a quiet hush right now, run it at lunch. In the little distracting? Or, yes. Okay. Do it aloud. There's your instruction manual. Uh, if you choose to read it, if not, you can dispose of it. We will. All right. After your hour, then you can place it. Wherever. You can, no, you can put it on whatever setting you want to do but it. But on high for the first hour. Yes. Got high will be the first the hour, time. and then after that. Cool. Okay, should we name him? How about Phil? Uh, I would name him like Stephen. Well, the problem is they're all Austin, so I, I, I want to. Yeah. I like Stephen. Stephen it is. All right, so we'll throw Stevie know. on at lunch. Okay. Thank you very much. You no problem. Put Stephen Charles. 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 Oh, Charles isn't bad. No, he's not. No, I have a kid named Charlie, so I feel like it'd be weird if I also named my air purifier Charlie. You have to put then it would be like, which one do I like better? And like, this one never gives me trouble. So then I, so I would inevitably end up in a situation where my favorite Charlie was not my own child, but the air purifier. <laughs> and that's not cool, right? True. See? True. See, you get it. Not get it. Gibby. It's Gibby. It's Gibby. Steven. Steven. Gibby. Steven. Gibby. Steven. Gibby. How about, this is Steven, but how about we just preemptively name Calford's Gibby? Oh, All in favor? I am delivering Calford's Gibby. Okay, I want you, can you tell them that its name is Gibby? Okay. Thank you. There we go. I feel good about that. Okay, um, why would we need an air I guess because, like, I, I guess because... <laughs> Oh, no, I'm just going to be quiet. Let's move on. Erythrocytes are red blood cells. Wait, what? Um, and you will often see the short form RBC. In this case, we are not talking about the Royal Bank of Canada. We are talking about red blood cells. Um, these are the most common blood cells by far. which means you're going to tell me what they do in just a moment. Uh, but before we do that, they are donut shaped. But not, you see, we always say that, and then you picture like, like a hole in the middle, which they don't have, but they do have a depression in the middle. Oh, oh, that was dark. Um, now I'm sad in writing a note. Um, so the donut shaped, by which we mean, if you look at them from the top under a microscope, and they look like this, um, there's always kind of like, okay, let's see if I can do this. They're always kind of deeply red. The deep. <laughs> the <laughs> They're always. They're always deeply red. I was bad. You are bad. Now let's focus. 
They're always deeply red around the periphery, and then the middle always looks lighter. The middle always lets more light through, and you can't see that so much on the drawing I did on the board, but can you kind of see that here? When you look at them under the microscope, they always appear to be much, 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 much fainter in the middle. And the reason for that is that if this is the top view, if you look at the side view, what you discover is that they have, as I said, depression in the middle. They kind of fold down thinly like that. That's amazing art. You're welcome. Yeah, of course I want you to draw. Okay, so tell me, what do red blood cells do? You know, they're the most common blood cell by far, so its purpose is obvious. What do they do? Oh, you are good. Exactly right. Their main purpose is to carry oxygen. That was really good. Usually I have to like drag that out of people. Thank you. How do they carry oxygen? You've probably heard of the molecule they use to do it. Very good. So the protein hemoglobin is involved in binding oxygen. It's a large molecule. And each of the active sites, hemoglobin has four active sites, four binding sites. And at the middle of each binding site is an atom that we don't normally see in organic compounds. Chemistry students, you know the common elements in organic compounds, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur. Those are the big guys, all those covalent compounds. But right in the middle of hemoglobin, there's four active sites, and each of those active sites contains an atom that we almost never see in organic compounds. And it's where oxygen binds. And what, what atom is that? Iron. Very good. Oh, I got right. That contain an iron atom. Here. Which means if your iron levels in your body are low, then your body struggles to produce hemoglobin. And if your body struggles to produce hemoglobin, it will struggle to bind oxygen, which means you will feel tired and laconic. Does anyone know what we call the condition of having low iron in your body? Anemia. Anemia is correct. And one of the symptoms of anemia is tiredness and exhaustion. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, the protein hemoglobin is extremely important. It is, by the way, what gives red blood cells their red color. Hemoglobin is a red colored molecule. The other thing to know about red blood cells, and am I going to talk about this today? No, not till tomorrow. But we're going to just mention it quickly. Um, RBCs, red blood cells, have protein markers called antigens on the cells of the surface. Oh, okay. Yeah, talk less, write more. I'm, I'm Shh. trying to draw. I'm just mentioning this to kind of set the seed for the day when we learn about blood typing, which is that your red blood cells have protein markers called antigens on the outer membranes that help your body identify them as belonging to your body. And different people have different types of markers. We refer to that as your blood type. Yeah. It's controlled by two genes. I mean, actually a few more, but the major ones are controlled by two genes. Yeah. What? Okay, and we'll just draw a real quick sketch of this. 
like you don't even have to draw this, this is gonna suck, but we have these antigen markers that sit on the outside of the cell like this and they are used by your body to identify and make sure that the blood in your body actually belongs to you. If you put blood cells in your body that have foreign markers on them that your body is not used to, what will your body do to that foreign blood? Destroy it, and in the process, kill you. This is why if you get a blood transfusion, it's very important that the blood they put in you be compatible with your blood. If it's not, it can harm you. Okay, that's the first type of blood cell, our red blood cells. What are they called again? What's their proper name? Erythrocytes is good, very good. The next one we're gonna talk about are our second type of blood cells and they are called leukocytes. Leuco just means white. So these are the white blood cells, very good. Okay. What do we know about them? I'm not even gonna write this, but if red blood cells are the most common, these are less common. Pretty obvious, right? We have a lot fewer of these than we have red blood cells. The first thing to note is they are much bigger than red blood cells. Much bigger than red blood cells. What do your white blood cells do? What do they do? Very good. They travel through the body. In search of foreign objects. And believe it or not, you actually have different white blood cells designed to fight different types of foreign objects. But yeah, of course. So for example, once you've been exposed to the COVID-19 vaccine, your white blood cells now are trained to look for Co SARS-CoV-2. And if they come across it, they will destroy them, yeah. Uh, probably not because the Wi-Fi is terrible, but I'm recording it at least, so I will put the recording up. This is my new workflow. It's a more miserable one, but it works. Yeah. yeah. This is your immune system. Yep, this is your immune system. So listen, we won't get into it too much, but basically your white blood cells work with something else called antibodies. An antibody's job is to grab onto something and say, hey, this shouldn't be here. And then what the white blood cells come and when they see an antibody stuck to something, they say, you're out of here. Does that make sense? They're kind of like the bouncers, all right? Um, we won't get too much into it. Uh, one way they defend the cell is with something we call endocytosis. This isn't the only way. You could take a whole course on the way your white blood cells defend the body. But one way, endocytosis. Well, wait a minute, those two words mean something. What did we say cyto means every time? Endo means what? If you have an endoskeleton, it is on the inside. So here's one way white blood cells can protect your body. Look, ooh, I'm drawing a vein or an artery. And let's say we had a nasty little virus here, little SARS-CoV-2. That guy sucks, we don't like him. So there he is. And he's got a little antibody hanging on to him saying, hey, white blood cell, come get this guy. We don't like him. And a white blood cell comes along. And this is not drawn at all to scale because in reality, white blood cell much, 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 much bigger than the virus. What does the white blood cell do in the process of endocytosis? Yeah, it surrounds it. Fascinating. Thank you. 
And once the virus is inside that white blood cell, that white blood cell can just pummel it with all sorts of chemicals that will destroy it. And if you have an injury on some spot in your body, your white blood cells are going to move to that spot specifically so that there's a lot of them present to absorb foreign materials should they get in there. Does that make sense? You may have heard of activating your immune system. When your immune system has to activate, your body will produce more and more white blood cells and move them to places where they'll be needed. Yeah? <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of different factors. The immune system is an incredibly complex thing, and we are just scratching the surface here. Um, but white blood cells are one of the main functions of your immune system. In fact, if anyone has somebody in their life who's going through cancer treatment, uh, my dad's going through cancer treatment right now, and one of the things you get uh, monthly is when he gets blood work done, you get your white cell count and your T cell count and these other things. But does anyone, does anyone unfortunately have somebody in their life where that's one of the things they hear about every month? They hear about their white cell counts and their T cell counts? Yeah. Um, and that's, that's a big predictor because when you're going through chemotherapy, chemotherapy is poisonous. And one of the scary things about it is, is chemo kills cancer cells, yay, but it also kills white blood cells, which leads people who are cancer patients open to infection. This, by the way, um, when people say like, 94% of people like get COVID and survive. Yeah, yeah, if you're young and healthy, you're probably gonna get COVID and be just fine. But one of the things that makes it so scary is if you're a cancer patient and you get COVID, very, 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 very bad news. And unfortunately at any given time in our country, a lot of cancer patients, right? So these are the reasons that, you know, you have to be thoughtful and careful about these things and why you go, well, why are we so scared of something that doesn't seem like it's very dangerous? Well, it's not dangerous to you, but to people who are immunocompromised and who don't have these systems in place, it can be very dangerous. Um, did that answer your question at all? Good, look at that. The third type of blood cell we're gonna talk about are the ones that take care of that function where we said, if I get cut, I will bleed for a bit. If you prick us, shall we not bleed? If you poison us, shall we not die? And if you wrong us, shall we not revenge? Like the others, shall we not resemble you in this? That is from? Shakespeare. Yes, specifically. A play that <laughs> Merchant of Venice team. Anyway, different discussion. Uh, if I were to be cut, say by Preston's harsh words, and they were to draw blood from me, and if words could, Lord knows they would, but if that were to happen, what would eventually happen to my cut? First it would bleed, and then it would... It would clot over. And that is because of another type of blood cell. What is the other type of blood cell that allows my blood to clot? You guys have heard of these, I bet. P word. This is another count they do if you're undergoing chemo to make sure that you have an appropriate platelet count. You have to have platelets. And platelets are the cells that are responsible for going to the site of a wound and clotting. And that will stop blood loss. So these small cells are part of your blood's clotting system. Bless you. And again, remind me, what does it mean for blood to clot? It means that at injury sites, platelets form a mesh.
you've experienced this because you have definitely, I guarantee, at some point in your life, had a cut that has started to scab over, because that's what we call it, right? A scab, which is this connection of platelet forming. But you've experienced when it is not solid enough yet to stop your blood from coming out, but it is solid enough to stop your red blood cells from coming out. What's that look like? You have a wound, and it's healed enough that no more blood is coming out, or I should say no more red blood is coming out but the plasma can still get out. What's that look like? Oh, like You know that gross, yellow, sickly kind of fluid that comes out of the cut when it's starting to scab over? That is your blood plasma. When this mesh has formed enough that no blood cells can fit through, but the liquid can still fit, fit through, you will still be bleed a bit of plasma. And the platelets keep forming and keep forming, and eventually it solidifies. No, it's very good for you. It's important. Um, G guys, I, I have to say, I, uh, I'm i kind of appalled to be teaching a grade 11 class where people just talk over me so openly and frequently. Uh, not something I'm used to having to deal with at the senior level. Come on. If I wanted to teach grade nines, I'd teach grade nines, but I'm not. Let's settle down. Why is this important? Well, it prevents blood loss. Um, there's a famous disease where people's platelets don't work properly. And it's very, very dangerous because if people with this disease get cut, it takes them an incredibly long time to heal, which means it takes them an incredibly long time to stop losing blood. What's that disease called? Oh, very good. That's true, yeah. I, I didn't catch who said that, but that's entirely true. It is called, well, it's actually, its name is really awful if you look at what it means. Uh, what did we say is the Latin word for blood? Very good. So hemo, and then it's actually really awful because the name of the disease is hemophilia. And hemo means blood. And philia is the Latin word for loving something. So we talked about something being hydrophilic or halophilic. So it's kind of an awful name where you're like, oh yeah, they really love blood. They just don't stop bleeding. It, it's really kind of a, a nasty name for a disease. But anyway, hemophilia <laughs> is the condition where your blood does not clot properly. <laughs> All right, look guys, we're almost done and I even left you with a bit of time. Um, so platelets prevent blood loss until new tissues can form. Now, if we were to take a test tube of blood and we were to centrifuge it to allow it to separate into its parts, what would we see in that test tube? Yeah. This is confirming a theory I have, which is that TikTok is something I never want to be on. <laughs> this, is, this is a theory I've been developing for a while. And my theory goes a little like this. I'm old and new things scare me, and so I don't like them. And this confirms it, because that sounds very scary. You know, I had high school romance, and I never gave somebody my blood. And can I say something else? I just have a feeling that if you're like, oh, I like that guy so much, He's really cute, or I like that girl so much. She's really cute. Uh, I should get him or her a gift. And you're thinking, hmm, what would be a good gift? What would be a good gift? You're like, flowers, boring, done, chocolates. Oh, that's boring. Like, like a ring. Oh, could you? Oh, what about a vial of my blood? You might be a weirdo. That's a real possibility. I'm just throwing that out there. All right. Welcome to charge it back, or you can't take it with you. If you look 
Back here on the left? Or you can try to tell us. No, that's fine. So the cavalry type is what I'm at trouble here, because I've got a little retreat. No problem. It can sit on the top there, and it's safe in there. Nobody's in there. Yeah. Uh, I think I did, and I think you should probably look a little closer, Ryan. I'm not saying your eyes are going, but uh, so anyway. So let's say that I was preparing a wonderful gift for my one true love of my blood, and we start with just a big old test tube of my blood. That's not going well. See, I can't that that I can't abide. Let's try this again. You know, sharing is important. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not saying you're selfish, but it kind of sounds like you're being selfish. That's all. Well, I'm just, listen, I'm just calling them like I see them. Okay, so if we started with a test tube of my blood, and we put it through a centrifuge, where we spin it round and round and round and round, have you guys seen my centrifuge in the back? Have we ever used it? I have a very nice centrifuge back there. I bought it myself with my own personal money. Um, but if we spin that blood down, the way a centrifuge works is it takes the densest stuff and we'll move it to the bottom of the tube and the lightest, like the least dense material and move it to the top. And when you do that with a vial of blood, you actually get these really distinct visible layers. And this is not accurately drawn because, of course, we said that by mass, there's more. Uh, Are you showing this? Yeah. Well, I'm doing this for my health. I'm doing this to show off. No, I just want you to see how amazing I am at drawing test tubes. Good try. You're probably pretty good at it. Not just oh, God, that did not go well. Yeah, that, that was poor. And when we do this, we're seeing the individual components of the blood. The yellow component at the top, what is that? Plasma. That's the plasma. And if you had to have blood plasma work done, they would take a tube of your blood and they'd spin it down and they would isolate the plasma and take just that out if they're doing plasma work. This little intermediate layer here, what's that? A little white layer there. What kind of cells are those? Yeah, what do we call those? What do we call those? Leukocytes, very good. And Lastly, we have the solid red mass down here, and that would be the? Nope, they're all hemocytes. Well, they're all hemocytes. Erythrocytes. Those are the other words for white blood, red blood cells. And again, if we all were native Latin speakers, biology class would be so easy because leukocyte means white cell. Erythrocyte means red cell. Um, so, you know, it's, it's kind of annoying that we have to use this specialized language, but it's what's used and we need to know it. Yeah? I think you'd be native Latin speaking because you'd want to hear it native. Precisely. Is this Latin uh, dev? It is. Um, so, that's it for today. Tomorrow, we're going to talk in more detail about how the blood moves around the body. And this is where it gets really interesting. Um, then the day after that, we're going to do some physiology. You're actually going to learn how to take your blood pressure, how to take your pulse. You're going to get the equipment out. You're going to put the stethoscope on. It's going to be fun. Has anyone taken the blood pressure before? Like manually? Like I know you've probably gone to the pharmacy and like put the thing on. But has anyone ever actually used a stethoscope and done it before? Yeah? Cool. Have you? Did you with me? Yeah. Did you take bio with me? Yeah. Were we online? Yeah. That sucks. Well, anyway, we're, yeah, so we're going to learn some practical skills here, and you'll learn how to take somebody's blood pressure. 
And that's something you can even do to one another. So that's kind of fun. Like we can actually do a hands-on physiology lab with that. So those will be our next couple days. Oh, like when you had to get blood taken? Yeah, oh. Let me see if that's not turned on. And if you didn't get yesterday's work done, get yesterday's work done. Um, if you didn't look at my background today, by the way, it's adorable. Every day I get a new one. And this one I am particularly fond of. I feel like this guy. I feel like that's kind of how I go through life. Oh, maybe. That's interesting. Like, what's the story here? This one just said... I made you a vial of my own blood and I put it on TikTok and this guy's like, I don't want to hear this right now. He just put his head right back. I guess birds probably don't use TikTok.